Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. I know, I know, math rock exercises that are both fun and easy. Steve, are you kidding me? Well, we have to start somewhere with learning math rock, so why not have some fun exercises to help you along the way? So in this video, I'll demonstrate each exercise for you, then I'll break it down and show you how you can play each exercise more easily. And lastly, I'm going to play each exercise slowly, and I want you to grab your guitar and play along with me. My hope is by the end of this, it feels like your own private guitar lesson but it's not costing you a thing. And if you're wondering what happened to my monitor here, literally just before I started recording, the lovely mic stand here decided to fall into the monitor. So I've got that to deal with uh, after this video. <laughs> For your first fun exercise, we have a finger picking exercise I like to call the finger addition exercise. And it goes like this. <laughs> This exercise is put together to help you develop your finger picking dexterity and it's inspired heavily by those kind of like finger gymnastic riffs that you hear in math rock and uh, I just wanted you to have something that is a little tricky but it's also a lot of fun once you nail this riff. So how can you play this? Well I recommend first choosing a setting on your guitar that's going to help you articulate the sound of each note. I'm like, Stratocaster here, I'm on the, um, you know, the kind of in-between sound, so each note sounds a bit more clearly. So for example, versus, um, I mean it's all to taste, but they kind of blend together a bit more on the neck pickup there. And obviously I could play unclean, but I like playing just with a bit of overdrive on my sound. So the exercise is based around three different chord shapes. So an A major 7 flat 5 chord, and I've put the fingering on the chart for you. Love the mysterious sound to that chord that you get from that. Uh, and next is going to be like a B7 chord down here. I'm going to add this kind of like borrowed chord in, let's say, or maybe we're just modulating to a different key. Uh, I'd have to work that out, but it's a B flat major 7 flat 5. And then we get back to the start of the repeat again. So that's what this hand is going to be doing. Your picking hand, you're going to be taking care of each string by assigning a finger and a thumb, let's say. So for this first chord, every single chord shape is going to follow the same picking pattern. And on the tab, I've indicated which finger to be using for which string. And basically, we're going to like walk up and go back a step. So imagine if you're going up a staircase, you know, you go up to come down one and then you know keep adding a step each time. So the first initial part is going to be your thumb and index finger. Then you're going to come back down again to your thumb and now you're going to add in the middle finger. And you can see why this is an addition exercise now. And now we're going to add in our ring finger on the picking. And lastly we want to add in our little finger to complete the whole thing. We end up with this like 7-8 time signature, which is wonderful for math rock. It gives the odd kind of feel and it's something that we can practice in an odd time signature. So usually in a guitar lesson, you know, you would practice these chord shapes and then I would be able to ask you to, can you play through the whole thing and I'll give you some feedback and I'll give you some technique pointers. As we can't do that, let's do the next best thing. And what I'm going to do is play this example really slowly. And I would ask that you grab your guitar and play along with me. I'm going to be using a metronome. We'll have a count in and we'll go through a couple of rounds of this exercise. Two, three, four, five, six, seven.
For your next fun exercise, we're moving on to a finger tapping exercise, and that goes like this. So you may be aware of already that finger tapping is one of the staple techniques we could say in math rock guitar. It's used a ton by math rock guitarists and out of all of the exercises that are developed over the years that I've been teaching this technique, I find this is one of the, the funner uh, exercises and it's great for building finger strength and a little bit of dexterity. So how to play this? I recommend for sound, let's go over to the neck pickup. It's going to give the thicker sound, which is just a bit better in my opinion for finger tapping. Um, for our hands here, your we're going to start from our fretting hand from the fifth fret on the E string and you're going to play your index on the fifth fret here, then the seventh fret on the A string with your ring finger. And then you're going to go in between that with your middle and ring finger. And what we're aiming for here is short staccato taps and it's kind of this like um, attacking the fretboard. It's kind of this, uh, what, what could we call it, like striking technique. And this is all to develop your strength for tapping. And the wonderful thing I like about this exercise that I made is um, this hand here, your strumming hand, is coming onto the fretboard now, it's usually the weaker of the two, and we're going to repeat the same pattern which makes it a bit easier to learn. Uh, anchor your thumb on the side here, and same again, but 9 to 11, and then 10 to 12. A few pointers here, for this hand generally maybe with many of you, well, especially me, my little finger. It's getting better, but it's not the strongest. So what I like to do is put, um, I've probably told you a million times already, but for those of you who didn't know this, um, I like to put my ring finger on top of the little finger here, just to give that tap a bit more definition. And uh, for muting, you want to be using the underside of your index finger here to lightly uh, lay on the strings between taps, otherwise you're going to start getting this a lot of overtones, especially with the more gain that you add, you're going to hear more of that. And the same when we come down here, just lightly lay your index finger across the strings, just to mute it that way. And we're going to walk up all, all of the strings here um, with this same repeating pattern. So let's practice this one together. Grab your guitar, I'm gonna play it again at a slow speed and we'll have a count in. Two and three and four and... So for our last fun exercise, I want you to grab your pick and we're going to learn a really cool strumming pattern.
So this fun strumming pattern I discovered in a song called Strongphony by the band Delta Sleep. And it's a really good example of just how you can be creative in odd time signatures. In this case, we are in a, a structure of 11-8, we could say, and I just find it's a wonderful pattern, lots of fun. So how can we play it? So I recommend this one. We're gonna go more gain just for this example. And I've gone on the bridge pickup. I've turned the distortion off for now, otherwise we're just going to get uh, too much noise. But the idea is based around kind of four chords. They're kind of more math rock and star because we've got some inversions and we've got lots of harmonic content going on, let's say, in these chord sounds. <laughs> as well as some lovely fret buzz. But they're based around these, like a major seven with an inversion, so the, um, the fifth in the bass. And um, so we're gonna take this shape, we're gonna keep our fingers in the same place, which just makes it easier to play. And we're just going to slide them up to this minor inversion. Again, with the fifth in the bass. So an E minor seven with the B in the bass. Now for our next chord, it's the same as the first chord. So keep your fingers in the same on the same strings. Slide up until till the tenth fret here, and we got that G with a D in the bass, G major seven with a D in the bass. And then we're going to go all the way down here. So B flat with an F, B flat, B flat major seven with an F in the bass. Just love how that chord sounds. Those are the chords. The strumming pattern, we could see it as well, some repetition in it with a little bit of variation on the third repeat. And we're going to be playing this river mostly. And this, as you can see on the tab, we want to make sure that we're playing these rests in between so we can lift out the pressure off the chord. But play that really slowly. That way we can make sure we're hitting those rests. So it goes. And then on the third one, so just one, two, three, and then another gap. And then it just, for the final, the sorry, for the final phrase, it's just the same rhythm of the first two, strum, two first two, again, like that. So all together. And now we're going to use that same rhythm, but with all of the other chords. Fairly straightforward. Let's practice this together. So again, grab your guitar, get on that bridge pickup, whack on some overdrive, distortion, whatever you like, whatever you prefer, and let's practice together. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So if you want to learn more about Mafrock, then I highly recommend checking out my Mafrock Essentials ebook that's full of plenty more exercises to help you learn, write and play Mafrock guitar. However, if that's too much for you, then there's a, a free Mafrock practice material that's over on my website and you can find both of those with links in the description. I want to say a big thank you to the patrons that support this channel and that is another way that you can get access to materials that are going to help you learn, write and play Mafrock guitar and we're building this kind of community together over there. So if you're interested in that, there's a link for that down below in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the patrons and I'll see you again again soon. Goodbye.